Hi, I'm Mr. Miyagi and this is Mr. Miyagi's workshop. Well, normally in this workshop, we do a lot of XS 650s, old Harleys, um, some old rusty Delicas, but today we're gonna take on a KLR 650. And this is the, the old uh, Kawasaki. Now I've got it kind of stripped down here. I was in the process of doing this and I'm thinking, well, maybe we should do a video on, on this. There's a few things that we need to go over on these. And these are basically a good bike. I've even th thought about buying one just to have one to run up in the hills. You saw that I built that dual sport out of an old 77 XS650. But uh, these are kind of a combo dual sport. Um, they're pretty good at off-roading and they're pretty good on the highway, but nothing fantastic about them, you know, so they are what they are. They're a fairly reasonable bike to buy and uh, it was fun. So um, I'm thinking on this and I'm kind of go over what I've already done to get to this stage. So the first thing I removed the air filter out of there. It was pretty dirty down inside. I cleaned that all up. And the, the air cleaner wasn't in the best of shape. I have cleaned this when I used soap and water. Got it all cleaned up. And yeah, it still kind of looks crusty. But I tell you what, it's a hell of a lot better shape than it was when I pulled it out. Now these are all spray down. I've got some... Um, spray on fluid uh, oil that uh, it's basically for the K&Ns, but I think it'll work fine on this. Um, well, I'm sure that somebody out there and go, oh my God, you're not supposed to use that. But hey, you know, this was all sticky and oily and everything. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to oil these down. And then some guys even talk about putting a little grease around this edge here. So it helps seal inside the case. So I've got some of this uh, spray on can in. Um, read a couple of places. Well, you're supposed to use the foam. This is for the paper. Um, yet they talk about putting any type of oil on these. So I figure, what the heck? This stuff here, it's easy to install. Um, there's a different other brands, but you know, this is a simple uh, way. We'll just. Uh, we're just gonna spray some on here. I I don't see why this won't work. I'll probably get some KLR guys going, oh, what the heck you doing? Well, this is what I had. And I don't see why it won't work, to tell you the truth. And if it won't work, why don't you put something in my comment section or send it to my email address at teammiyagi at hotmail.com and we'll have a discussion over it. Okay, good. Settle that. So I'm going to let this set up on here a little while and then uh, we'll put it back into the air box. All right, uh, I've reinstalled the air filter. There's a wing nut shaft goes in here now there was enough uh sealing around the outside of this with uh, the oil that i sprayed on there that i didn't worry about putting any grease or anything on it so there's not too much to those filters you just need to be careful with them when you especially when you're cleaning them so you don't rip uh the foam but there it is it's back together again one of the other reasons why I pulled the fuel tank off to get to the spark plug down in that hole sure makes it a lot easier. Uh, I got that off. I went and picked up a, the old spark plug. This is actually fairly clean. I, just, I ran it over there on the, on the machine, my wire brush machine, and it cleaned it up a little bit. But I decided that I'm not sure how many miles the spark plug has on it since it has, it doesn't look like it, when I pulled it out, it looked like it had ever been changed. So I ended up buying a new spark plug to put in. 
One thing I will do, and uh, I don't know if a lot of you out there do this, but I will put a little bit of uh, anti-seize on the threads. And I just feel better doing that. Um, you don't need a lot, but it just helps in these aluminum heads to get the darn thing back out again if you have, if you have to pull the plug. All right. One thing you want to realize too, when you're pulling those spark plugs out, there's it's down in a chamber. So you kind of want to make sure before you pull that plug out is to clean that area out. And I vacuumed it out. Um, you know, you can spray, you could shoot air down there and clear it out too. Uh, I just happen to have the vacuum cleaner close by and I vacuumed that out of there. Uh, I've got a panel on this side I have to repair where the where it bolted on right here there's a little bracket on the pan on the cover itself that broke so I'll glue that back together I picked up some JB weld we will use that to put that back on there oh yeah that sucker works good it's already starting to set up excellent and then basically, I'm just going to do an overall check of the whole bike. One thing I did order, too, is I ordered some uh, new uh, brake pads for the rear here and for the front. Another thing that we have one here is the fork seals on this are leaking, and I want to change the, the fluid in this. So we'll go through that process of taking these apart and off the, off the bike. And also what we're going to do, too, is that we're going to change the oil filter and put new, new uh, oil in it. So we've drained the oil on this and we removed the old filter. And it's two screws, you pull this cap off. And if you have a little problem, you can put a little screwdriver in behind here and work this out because of this seal that goes around there. It's a little snug. Now, before you put this all back together again, you wanna take the centerpiece out of filter here. This is the bypass valve setup. You wanna make sure that this is clean. Okay, we're gonna install a new filter. And what you want to do first here is you want to apply a little uh, oil there to help lubricate it. And you want to reinsert this. You want to make sure that this lip, you see that lip there, goes against the engine block. So that just shoves back in place there. You also want to make sure that this little lip around this area here where that o-ring goes is good and clean. You take that and slide that back in. Now, if you've replaced this O-ring, or if you ha even if you haven't, what you want to do is you want to lubricate that area there so that it'll slide back together a little easier. So that just lines up. Now, there's an arrow. You want to make sure that's pointing upwards. It all pops together. And then you just put your screws back in. These are an eight millimeter. And then I, I love these little impact wrenches. They're great. So now we're just going to put the oil in. And this takes about 2.6 quarts, uh, US quarts in it. Now I'm using a uh, 1040 weight. Put this on, I'm gonna start the engine and double check everything. Okay, I started up the engine, I ran it just a little bit. You didn't need to go through that. Now what we're gonna do is put in the final uh, bit of oil. And this is gonna take oh, slightly over a half a quart. Now what we've done is we've filled it to the top mark 
right here. And we will run it a couple more times. I haven't got the tank on right now, so it's not going to run all that much. And then I will double check it because I never, I didn't get a full half cord in there. So I want to double check this. I'm going to pull these uh, fork tubes off and replace the, the seals. This one leaks. And so the kit comes in two, so I thought I'd just replace both of them because eventually that other side was going to go too. Right here is a little screw that you can take out. Then you can drain fork oil. Also what I did at the top, since this has got uh, the air uh, valve set up at the top, I ended up pulling the air valve out so that there would be complete flow. So now I've already drained this. There's still a little bit of residual that's dripping out here. We're going to pull these all apart and uh, clean them, but I wanted right now, I just wanted the major part of the fluid out of the forks. I ended up taking the brackets off. This one here, um, the nut is stripped onto this, so I'm going to have to figure out how to get that off. This is uh, the bolt that I pulled out of this little mount for uh, the brake uh, side cable and stuff, but you can see that it's all kind of just mangled up. I finally got it out of there. It was also welded on there, a little tack weld. So I ended up making up another one and sticking it on. So when I put this back together, everything will go back to like it's supposed to, hopefully. So these clamps are cut, are sliced here. So they squeeze around the tube and hold it in place. And uh, a lot of times you can just get them to turn. You have to work them a little bit and they'll slide. So now another thing that I want to do is I want to put a little bit of oil on this area where the tube is coming out so we don't scrape. So I'll shoot up a little WD up in this area. And that will help lubricate this slide through. And then it makes it a little easier to. And we should have enough room. I may end up having to jack the bike up just a little higher. Oh, came right out. All right. So we'll get the other side and get it done too. Now you can pry these clamps a little bit to open up just to get them started. It just helps break everything loose there. Now, it's out. So, now we can break them down the rest of the way. Now, to help me uh, hold these forks in place, I made up this little uh, block. Now, this is just out of some uh, Trex board that I had that I was using on some decking. And since these are a 38 millimeter fork, basically, or are, they're slightly under an inch and a half. So I just bored an inch and a half hole with a slight gap in it that will make this slide over. And now I can tighten it down in the vise. And I can get a good clamp. I've seen guys wrap cloths and stuff around here. The problem with it is if your jaws on your uh, your vise are really aggressive, they'll still tear through that cloth. But this is a good way. You could use wood. I don't see any problem with that. I just happen to have some of this deck material. This, you know, you could probably even go down to the local um, store and see, uh, tell them you want a sample. A large sample. This is about two and a half inches by by about four inches long. One inch thick or close to. And it works really well for tightening down on these fork tubes without marring them because you're going to have to take off this cap up here and there's a screw that you need to take out here in the bottom so you need some way of holding all this. Uh, one of the things I did before clamping it up in the vise is I removed this fork boot. And you want to inspect them to make sure they're good and clean. Uh, this one's held on with a little uh, 
clamp here. It's a little Phillips. Just unscrew that and wiggle a little bit and it'll come right off. Next we want to do is we want to loosen off this uh, top nut. And that's what's nice to be able to clamp these. And before I take this all the way out, I want to remove the back uh, Allen back here. So I'm going to get set up for that. Okay. Now this is a number 10 socket. So um, you can either use a big Allen ratchet setup, or if you have air, you can, which works much easier. But what I, you want to do is you want to block this tube from moving. So I've got it blocked in two places. I've got it blocked right here at the base because this will spin on the fork. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep pressure against this so that this nut, will, or this uh, Allen will loosen up. Let's see if we can get this to break loose. Oh, there we go. Uh, having an... Um, Having an air impact wrench really helps. Okay, so let's uh, move to the front up here and we'll remove this uh, front cap. Now you want to hang on to these because you're going to have spring compression behind it. So be aware of that. Alright, so the cap is off. You'll have a spacer. But also, when you're working on this, it's nice to have a drip pan on the floor below where you're working so you don't make a big mess. Okay, this is just a piece of bent wire. Feel up in there. Hook and pull the spring. Now you're going to have a little uh, spacer that fits on top to pr protect the spring when this is attached. Just helps spread the load. So this comes out. Also need to remove the keeper, and that's just to help hold that uh, seal in place. Now I couldn't get this uh, Allen to loosen up, so I made up this little tool to go down inside, and it's a uh, 15 16 nut welded onto some shaft. I just used square stock so that I could put a uh, crescent wrench or another uh, unit on there. So I could shove this down inside uh, the tube here and stop it from turning. And when I get it apart here, I'll show you. But this didn't want to come out. It kept spinning on the inside. So that was wh what, I'm, what I did to uh, lock it, to make it so I could get it off. So that this tube can pull off, off there. So what you want to do now is that you want to clean all this up and I'll show you what what I was hooking on to. So basically all I did is I dropped and made a nut to fit down in there to keep this unit from turning so that I could remove the set screw. Now this is a 10 millimeter uh, socket and it screws right on the end here. And that holds everything together. Plus, this all this stuff here goes on and then sets down, and then it's kind of a lock down inside there. So I'm gonna clean all of this up and we'll do the other tube. Okay, we're gonna put these tubes together. So usually the first thing I do is I'll drop the dampener down inside, and then I will take a spring. Put that little collar on, the spacer on, and screw this cap down. Yeah, you don't have to go all the way because we're going to take that back off again to fill it. So you want to put on your lower mount and this little ring, and it goes on. There's a little groove there, and there's a little snap ring that goes on there. It goes together as such. And then slide your fork tube down on there. Then what we're going to do, that screw, screw this all together. Now this is where 
if you have an impact driver, an air style, it really works nice for tightening those up. If you don't, let me tighten this up and then we'll talk about it. So that puts it in there nice. So for putting these tubes together, uh, fork tubes, there is this little bushing that's at the top up uh, that slides on here. And you knock that out when you pull these tubes. And where that locates is on this inner lip right in here. And that helps stabilize the top end of the fork. But to get that back in there, it has to be pressed back in. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can buy these expensive uh, seal installers, which work quite well. They just slide up and down the tube and then you jam them in there, they're weighted. Or you can get a piece of pipe slide down and help drive that in and it also help put your uh, seals in uh, this is just a scrap piece that i had laying around the shop once again we're going to insert the dampener through and it comes all the way through there we're going to put in a uh, a spring then that goes on and once again your cap goes into place so now we have a a dampener base and once again want to make sure there's a little indent there that this goes on as such and then slides in on place here and then you can put slide this fork tube right on and then you grab your allen and then of course i have an ear wrench so that's the way i'm going to do it all right we still have to get that upper upper bushing in place. So just drop your spacer for your seals in there. Take a piece of that tubing. And drive it on. So now we're at the stage where we can install the new seals. What I did is I cut a piece of uh, inch and a half uh, schedule 40 pipe and about seven inches long for putting the seals in and for putting that upper bushing back in so everything just fits in there nicely and remember you know if you don't have that torque wrench you know this inserted using a 15 16 nut welded onto a stock and i would say you would need to to the bottom of the nut to where I cut it off is 28 inches so that you have plenty of room to reach inside there and grab that little uh, dampener which is already set up for accepting this that special tool then I don't know what that would cost but you know I'm probably into this for five bucks and of course the clamp for the forks this works really well Quick and easy stuff, people. Right now, we're going to work on putting the seal on uh, the right-hand side fork. I've already done uh, the left-hand side fork, but it's pretty simple. Uh, you want to make sure that your spacer right here is on. Putting these seals on, one little trick I like to do... Uh, to slide down these forks put a little lubricant on the the inside of these but i also like to use like a little plastic piece of plastic it kind of protects the seal and in one way you want to make sure that these seals are going on right so that you're um so always pay attention when you take that apart but these just slide down on there and if you use the plastic it help protects that edge so you can slide it down to where it needs to go in and then pull your plastic out because you know sometimes there's a little bit of roughness around the uh, the fork now we're going to set that seal in place and i'm going to grab my new little tool that i made and put it down in there 
you're just going to tap it in. Good to go. Then you want to put your uh, dust shield on. Squeeze it down in there. And your little clip that holds everything together. And you can even use the tool to put that on. That'll drop. You want to make sure there's the grooves on the inside here. You want to make sure that that little clip ring fits down in there. So now we're good to go there. So I'm going to get some uh, fluid ready to go in here and we'll, we'll put the fluid in. All right, well, we're going to uh, put in about uh, 450 milliliters of fluid in here. Uh, and you want to make sure you pull your spacer out. It makes it a lot easier while putting this in. And try not to spill it on everything like I do. All right. Anyway, you're going to put your spacer back in. You're going to put your cap back on. And I'm going to make sure it's down on. Now, if you've pulled out, if you have your uh, little air core, you want to make sure that you put that back in at this time. Now, another thing we're going to end up doing is we're going to put the fork boot on. Now, sliding these uh, forks back into the triple trees, uh, I like to use a little bit of oil on them, a little lubricant. It just helps them slide back up in there. Um, <clears throat> And you want to make sure you put your uh, boot back on. Right back in there. There we go. So I want to bring that cap up. And I'll show you here. I want to bring that uh, fork up to where that cap is just flush. So I've got the fork tube. You can just barely make out a line there. That's where the fork tube stops and the cap is. So now that's where I'm going to tighten everything down. Once you get everything tightened down, you want to line up your boot a little bit. I always put the drain holes for the boot towards the rear. In case water builds up, it's going to drain out of that a little easier that way. And then basically uh, put all your other stuff back together. Now, I did re-lube this uh, Speedo cable just to make sure it was in good working order. If you ever have this uh, speedo drive off, you remember that you're going to have to line up with these little slots here with some protruding arms out on this. So you want to make sure that those are on because otherwise that will mess everything up. That should be tied up against her. It should not be standing off. Also, when you're installing these, you want to make sure that you re-put little, this little notch lined up on this little piece that sticks out here on the fork tube. Let me turn it here a little bit on that. So what that does is that holds this uh, drive unit in place in the proper angle and keeps it from moving as the wheel is turning. Also, uh, it doesn't hurt to apply a little uh, grease onto your axle when you're reinserting them. Um, if you're doing a lot of water crossings, this could get corroded on here and be a real bitch to get out. So this always makes it, I usually dab on a little bit and then I'll put it through, making sure that I got everything lined up. And when you move the old Carter pin for the other side to lock the nut off, I usually like to replace these. All right, well, with the wheel back on and everything checked out, I'm still waiting on brake pads, um, ignition switch, and a few other odds and ends. So this kind of ends part one for now. But we'll be back with part two to finish off and put this bike back together again. So uh, if there's any questions or comments, you can put them in the comment section below or you can send them to my email at tmiyagi at hotmail.com. So uh, if you've liked this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget that ringy-dingy button for uh, the next episode coming up. 
Well, this is Mr. Miyagi saying, be safe out there. Hope to see you on the road. Ciao.